God not only knew, but he knew exactly where it was. And so uh, as they go off to their next battle, they, they go to fight uh, another battle against the next city that because of the sin that is upon them and because they didn't give God everything that God was to have, they're routed by their enemies. They end up turning and running and for the first time, they lose about 28, 30 soldiers are killed. And when Joshua gets back, he, he falls down on his face before God and says, God, what's going on? You promised to give us the land, and now here, we've been routed by our enemies. We've been driven out. We've been humiliated. What's happening? And God's reply simply was this. Israel has sinned. So I says, what, what have we done? He said, you took some of the things that were mine. Some of the things that would be dedicated to me, you've taken for yourselves. And so begins the scripture text that we read this morning as Joshua the next day has a, 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 the head of every one of the clans comes. Each of the family clans comes. And as they come uh, and stand before him, God shows him which tri each tribe first. It's the tribes first. He shows him it's the tribe of Judah. And so then he has the head of each clan of Judah come and stand before him. And he, God shows him the right, the right clan. And then they had the head of every family in that clan come and stand before him. And God takes him to Aiken. And in the passage that we read, Joshua says to Achan, Achan, what have you done that's brought this calamity on us? And Achan fesses up. He says, you know, I, I was in the battle. I saw this on the ground. And I, I know what you said, that everything belonged to God, but I coveted it. I wanted it for myself, and I took it for myself. And it's hidden in my tent. It's buried in the ground in the center of my tent. And so Joshua immediately sends them in and they find it's just like it can stand. And so the only thing they can do at this point is to sacrifice it back to God, but not just that, but to appease a that Achan is sacrificed in his family and everything he has is given to God as an offering. Terrible lesson that they learned. Next day, they go back to battle against that same city again, and this time they capture the city with ease. No loss of life at all among them. God is again giving them the land. The lesson of Achan is a, is a like I said, is really two lessons. One, you can't, you, you can't hide sin from God. He always knows. You can hide it from others. Achan had hidden it from the rest of Israel. Yahshua, none of them knew anything about it, but God did. And that's always true for our lives as well. But then there's also this lesson of first fruits that God demands from us. You say, well, how in the world does that fit in with us today? Do we have this concept of first fruits that we give to God? Well, Jesus did. Jesus talked about it. And yet we still do today. We call it the time. Because what the tithe is actually is a first fruits offering to God. God says, so let's take 10% off the top. Give it to me with the faith and understanding that I'm going to give you everything that you need. And I'm going to take care of you. I want you to realize, he says to us, I'm the one that sustains you. I'm the one that holds you up. I'm the one that gives you the ability to work and make a living and do all of those things. I am your God. And as we give the first fruits to him, it's a statement of our faith that we believe that God is going to take care of us and that God's going to provide for our needs and that God's going to do all the things that he promised because he promised to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. You see, our giving has always been a faith issue. But whether or not we really trust God. 
They came to Jesus once and said, Lord, should we pay our taxes? They didn't like to pay taxes back in those days any more than we do today. People haven't changed a lot in 2,000 years, have they? And Jesus said to them, you remember what he said? He said, give me a coin. And they gave him a coin. And he said, whose image is this? And they said, Caesar's. And so Jesus said simply this. He said, when you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and make sure that you give to God what belongs to God. See, it seems like we're eternally tempted to play the part of Abraham. And take what belongs to God and keep it for ourselves. Somehow we always seem to come and want more. And God saying to me, to us simply, trust me in this. Trust me in this. If you give me the first fruits, I'll give you all that you need. You know what? I've never met a single person who gives the first fruit to God, who has ever said to me, God didn't provide not only what I needed, but always far beyond. It's a question of faith. And it's a question of walking by faith and being people of faith. Do we trust God or not? But does God keep his promises? Well, that was the challenge for Israel. Achan failed the challenge. He wouldn't believe, didn't trust, and he ended up disastrously. Someone pointed out last night, here's a man who is a part of the people of God, but who won't walk by faith, and he ends up destroyed in the end. And yet, the week last week, we talked about a woman who wasn't a part of the people of God, but who acted by faith, believed God, and she inherits the promises. It's always about faith. And whether or not we give our God will be what he says he will do. Father in heaven, we're thankful for your word. Keep us, Lord, from the set of And rather, Father, may we be people of faith. May we believe. May we trust you, Lord. May we find that as we put you to the test, we discover, Lord, that you more than meet the needs. You never fail us. You've never forsaken us. Now, Lord, may we walk by faith. That we might be the people of God. And that we might have a word and a message to say to our community about what you're able to do if they'll just trust you. We pray, Lord, in your name.